Additional functionality has been added to FeatureCam's 3-axis machining module when utilizing the holder collision clipping function. Previously, only the default parameter-based holders were used for checking. This function has now been enhanced with the inclusion of holders derived from curves and solid models. This results in safer and easier programming because we are using a more accurate representation of the holder for collision checking. So in this example you can see we've got quite a tall steep component that we wish to machine with a series of Z-level toolpaths. In this case you can see I've got two uh, two toolpaths here that are using a default parameter based holder and then I have four additional toolpaths that are using the custom based holder. In this case I'm just going to uncheck setup number one I'm going to go to the Z-level first toolpath and just run through a centerline simulation to create the toolpath itself. You can see here we get a full toolpath down the component. If I go ahead and do a 3D simulation, now in this case I'm just going to go to my simulation settings and on the 2D 3D shaded I've got the pause on gouge selected. So if I do a 3D simulation play that so far through and sure enough we get a gouge. I could try and continue to play this through but of course it's going to continue to collide with that holder. So the new option we added in previous releases was the ability to check against that holder geometry. This is a simple checkbox you can see holder collision clipping for the second toolpath is switched on. If I have to rerun through that centerline simulation we can see sections of the toolpath have now been cut out and we've removed those from the toolpath calculation. If I have to play my 3D simulation again we no longer get a pause on gouge. So clearly we've managed to avoid any collisions and we've machined as far as we could do in this particular orientation. But as I said previously uh, we didn't have the capability to use custom holder geometry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of custom holders and we're going to utilize uh, on a separate level you can see we've got a, a Samvik Korachuk uh, 930. If I go ahead and just turn that level on uh, you can see there's a series of uh, dimensions and if I just redraw the shading you can see there's also a solid holder in there and if I was to hide that holder you can see here I've got a curve representing the holder as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, toolpath uh, or a, a new representation of the holder using this accurate geometry. Now I've got four additional toolpaths here. Now these four toolpaths you can see we've got uh, the previous release and this current release. Now the key difference here is actually what we've created is a toolpath type feature to show what the toolpath would do in the previous release and the second one is actually the Z-level toolpath that has the proper calculation with the collision checking. So let's go ahead and create the tools themselves first of all. So I'm going to go into this first one here. Uh, we've got the tool already uh, created so the naming convention is, uh, is already there but we need to change the holder. So I'm going to go into the tool, into the holder and I'm going to create a new holder based on the default one that we've got here. So in this case we've got it's a, a Coro Chuck 930 so I'll call this one Coro Chuck and call it 930 and then call it dash C8. And because we're using a curve I'm going to call this one curve as well. Uh, we're going to uncheck the inches we want a metric type tool and I'm going to go through and just highlight so we could create a, a similar representation if we were doing parameters so I could enter the parameters here uh, set the size of the actual uh, tool itself so in this case I'm going to set tip diameter to be 55 uh, the overall diameter in this case is 80 uh, I'm going to set a uh, tip length in this case to be 62 and we'll just say fit any tool and we're also going to remove the taper so we get something that looks similar but you can see because we're using the default parameters or the parameters type setting we don't get a truly accurate representation for example the chamfered edge is quite different on this tool so even though we've got something that looks similar it's not as accurate as we want it to be so what I can do is in this case I'm going to use the curve of revolution I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that curve like so uh, and also I'm just going to copy this name because I'm going to use this uh, for future reference in the solid model one as well. So let's go ahead and say OK to that. And you can see we've created that uh, particular holder. You can now see it's been uh, selected for that tool as well. 
and we get the representation of the tool like so. So I'm going to say apply to that and say OK. Now the first one, as I said, is a, a toolpath type feature. So if I go ahead and just play the centerline simulation, we get the full toolpath like so, but we can see the different holder. If I was to do this as a 3D simulation, previous functionality, this is what we would get. We'd get a collision with the holder because it wouldn't recognize the holder geometry. So to improve this functionality, I'm just going to go to the next one. So this uses Z-level uh, toolpath. Again, we use, we've, this time we've got the holder collision clipping selected, and we're also using that same tool from before. If I go ahead and play centerline simulation, we get the toolpath calculating, and we can see the clipping has now occurred on the toolpath to remove those problematic sections. If I was to do a 3D simulation, you can see we no longer get our collision checking or collision warning on the part. So we're just going to repeat that for the, the final one. So this is using the, uh, the solid holder. And again, going back into the toolpath, into the settings for this tool, into the holder. I'm going to go ahead and select, let's call this one solid. And again, we're going to go for a metric type tool. I'm going to choose the solid model. I'm going to go ahead and select the, uh, the solid, which is that solid like so. And we're just going to enter the parameters. So in this case, we had an overall length of 97, and this fits any tool. So I'll say OK to that. And you can see we get the, uh, the, the tool holder uh, represented on the image like so. Like so. And again, run through the centerline simulation. So we can turn this level off. So previous functionality with a solid model. Again, we would have got something like this. Just to highlight, there's my solid model now, and we can see the difference between the curve revolution because we've got cutouts and so on. So playing the 3D simulation, we get the collision like so. But if I go to the my other toolpath, and again, Z-level toolpath with the collision clipping switched on, using that solid model holder. Play the center line. and we get the toolpath accurately clipped as we would want. So it makes for much safer and easier programming by actually allowing us to utilize the more accurate definition of the holders themselves.